Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend his family are leeches after meeting them for the first time? We have been dating for about four months, and last night was the first time I met his family. They were nice at first, but I could not stand the sight of them by the end of the night. During dinner, the conversation was normal as they asked about me and my family. Then the table divided into smaller conversation groups, and I overheard his older brothers talking to his sister about investing. I am not an expert, but I will give you the gist of what I heard. She has been out of school for a couple of years and has saved up about $75,000 and wants to start investing. They said property is the best, and that Section 8 is the way to go. They said that the rent is always paid on time, and the people will not damage the property because they are afraid of getting removed from the program. They said the best part is that they will still own the properties, and the value will always go up. They said they are developing a small neighborhood with about 10 houses specifically for Section 8. All of those houses are under 2,000 square feet and have four bedrooms because Section 8 pays higher rates for more bedrooms, and smaller houses are cheaper to maintain. They said it will cost them about $100 per square foot to build these houses, and the rent will be about $4,000 per month. They said she could buy in on her first rental house next year when they start another development. They are in the process of closing on a piece of land that will accommodate about 20 houses. I cringed and could not keep quiet anymore. I told them that instead of renting out and keeping those houses off the market, they should sell them to those people. They looked at me quietly, and I knew they had never considered helping people out by selling the houses they were building. His father told me I was out of line, and I answered that his family was out of line for preying on people in need while feeding off the taxes people pay. I said that most people cannot afford to buy a single house, yet his sons are building 10 to 20 at a time, which makes them exploitative. We argued for a bit, then we left. This morning my boyfriend told me I need to apologize to his family, but I refused to. We just met after my last class, and he told me we are no longer invited to any of his family functions, including the Christmas trip, back to their old country. Since we are still in school, his family was going to pay for us, so he really wants me to apologize and smooth things over. I know I am right, but maybe I should not have been so harsh on the first meeting. What do you think? OP, you were invited to spend Christmas with your boyfriend's family after just four months of dating, and they even paid for your trip and dinner. But instead of showing gratitude, you called them blood-sucking parasites over a topic you admitted knowing little about. First impressions matter, and pushing unsolicited opinions is just plain rude. You're the jerk. Apologize and educate yourself before embarrassing yourself again. Am I the jerk for having a birthday party and sleepover at my dad's house but not my mom's with my step -siblings? My parents got divorced when I was three years old, and my mother remarried when I was eight years old. My stepsister and I share the same birthday. I have a stepbrother as well, but he does not share the same birthday. Because my stepsister's birthday is on the same day as mine, my mother and her husband insisted that we celebrate our birthdays together each year. I asked my mother to celebrate separately, but she said it was more affordable and allowed them to go all out for us. I asked my father if I could still have parties when I was with him, and he agreed. So at my mother's house, I never asked for a party and just went along with whatever was planned, while the real celebration happened at my father's house. This year, my mother and her husband took us to a spa for the birthday celebration and then brought us out to eat afterward. They said celebrating with family was the best way to celebrate birthdays. That was two weeks ago. My father threw the party for me on Saturday. It was a sleepover and a party combined. My best friends and I went to a virtual reality gaming arcade and spent a few hours there. Then we went back to my father's house, had lots of food and snacks and played video games pretty much all night long. It was the best. My mother came to pick me up yesterday when one of my friends was leaving, and she overheard them thanking me for the invitation. My mother saw the balloons my father put out as well. On the way to her house, she asked if I had a party, and I said I always do. She said I never asked her to throw a big party when I celebrate at her house. I told her I save that stuff for my father's house since it is just about me, and I do not have to share with her stepdaughter. She told me I should invite my step-siblings, but I told her I do not want to. I said it is bad enough sharing the celebration at her house, but I will not do it at my father's house. And I told her they are not my friends, and I do not want to spend time with them. I just have to. My mother's husband was upset when he heard. Then my stepbrother was upset because he loves video games and never gets to play them all night. My mother lectured me for about an hour last night about it. Am I the antagonist? You are not the problem. Your mom is making the mistake that a lot of adults in blended families make by failing to acknowledge their own kids' needs over their fantasy of a family. It's interesting that your mom and stepdad thought a spa and lunch were the best joint birthday idea for a 15-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl without considering if you'd like it. Even if you had input, it's reasonable to have a separate party at your dad's house. Many divorced parents do this. As long as you're respectful of the steps, there's no need for them to infringe on your activities with your father. Am I the jerk for refusing to cook eat food found in the bin? I, 20-year-old female, live with a housemate, 20-year-old who is really passionate about the environment. They are vegan and are involved in community groups in our area that revolve around activism. I love this about them. We are planning a party at our house for a fairly large group of people at the end of the week, and we are planning to cook pizzas to feed everyone. 
which we have done a few times before and never had issues with. Mostly, my friends and our other housemates' friends are coming, as well as some friends of the housemate in question. This housemate mentioned in the group chat for the party that they would be able to scavenge food for the event. They have recently been going through the bins of local supermarkets to rescue food that has been thrown out. For no reason, I understand, that food waste is a massive problem, and that the big supermarkets where I live do have a problem with discarding things like vegetables for aesthetic reasons when they are perfectly edible. I think it is somewhat extreme, however, to go through those bins and eat what has been thrown out. I work in a small supermarket and I know I would not eat anything that goes in those bins because you just do not know what else has been in there. But if they are happy to, more power to them. My issue is with this party. I was messaging my housemate about it and asked them if they were planning to go bin diving for the party. They said yes, just for some ingredients, because things like capsicum are too expensive. I said I would be happy to buy them and that they do not have to pay. Even after repeating that multiple times, they pushed the issue, saying food waste is a massive problem and they will clean everything really well and if you want to inspect every vegetable in detail that is fine. I was out of town when we were having this discussion over text, so I told them we would talk about it when I get home because I do not want to accidentally sound mean over text. We are going to chat about it tonight. Basically, I am posting this here to ask if I am the wrong one when I tell them not to cook bin vegetables for the pizza party. I just think it is rude to serve people food that comes from the bin. To me, it is weird and makes me feel uncomfortable. I do not think that bin diving for food as a whole concept is bad, and I do not want my housemate to feel like I think they're gross. But I do not think that just washing food when it has been in the bin is enough when you do not know where it has been. I feel like I am being crazy for thinking that at this point. If they want to bin dive for food for the other 364 days of the year, that is cool, but I really hope it is not unreasonable to ask them not to when we are feeding a big group of people. Your actions don't make you a jerk. It's one thing for your housemate to choose to consume food from the trash for a political cause, but serving it at a party without warning people is inappropriate. Most guests would likely decline eating if they knew the food was rescued from the dumpster, and they have a right to that knowledge. Food has a sell-by date for a reason, and consuming it past that date can be dangerous. Serving such food without explicit consent could even legally be considered poisoning in some places. I have for not being the bigger man in the fight with my neighbor, so my son, wife and I live in a suburban area townhome, which is side by side with others. We have the big end unit, which is three stories with a basement and a deck. We also have two parking spots with two cars that we use daily. Our feud started on Memorial Day this year while I was hosting a gathering for crabs and a seafood boil. I bought two bushels of extra-large crabs for $650, plus crayfish, sausage and corn. I also supplied the alcohol, including a keg and spirits, and charged guests $25 for all you can eat and drink. I did not invite her because she was more ghetto than some of my family and friends could handle. We would consider ourselves acquaintances, more so my wife and her. She came over and I caught her with a pile of eaten crabs and a solo cup filled halfway with vodka. I explained to her that if she wanted to stay, she would have to pay the $25. She refused and started making a scene about how I should be neighborly and let her stay for free, how she was broke, and how she would liven up the party. I refused to give in and told her to leave. She grabbed a handful of crabs, filled her cup to the brim and left. The next morning I noticed one of my tires was slashed and had a knife pinning a crab shell to it. I immediately knew it was her. I confronted her but she played it off and yelled at me. I called the police but they did nothing except give me an insurance claim. The next day, another tire was slashed with a smiley face written in yellow marker. I decided it was on. Later, I found my basket scattered across my deck. The following weekend we were leaving for a vacation. She saw us pack and all. When we returned three days later, my deck door was wide open and the inside of our home was ransacked. Nothing was stolen, but everything was in disarray. I confronted her and some guy who was with her. She flipped out, chewed me out, and the guy started getting aggressive. He ended up pushing me, so I hit him in the jaw and knocked him out. She called the cops and explained everything that had been happening, but nothing happened other than her guy getting arrested for assault. She told me afterward that she wanted this feud to end, but I was not done. One night I had a buddy come by and smash two of her back windows out with rocks. I ran out my front door in my pajamas half asleep so I had an alibi. The police came again and questioned me, but my wife and the neighbor said I was home. Sounds like a classic case of everyone pointing fingers at each other. You are the jerk here OP, but honestly, so is she. Maybe you all should just duke it out and let the best neighbor win. Thanks for that little slice of life. Am I the jerk for not helping with my mother-in-law's renovations? My mother-in-law, who is 62 years old, lived in a very small house. She raised three children there on her own with the help of her parents. She has two daughters and one son who is the middle child. I married the oldest daughter. We have two children, and we live about two hours to two and a half hours away from my mother-in-law. My wife, who is 41 years old, works in healthcare and has a nice salary. I work in construction and during our time together, we gathered a few buildings that we rent out. It was time for my mother-in-law to leave that small house, which is around 400 square feet. 
We tried to motivate her to move out and helped her with house hunting. We found a house and helped her get a loan. Her salary was enough for a loan, but due to her age, all her children needed to sign the loan. No one gave any money, just support. Her salary and savings were enough for buying a better house, but she was afraid if one child needed her. My mother-in-law's new house is in a better, bigger and nicer area. However, the house is old and it needs some repairs. Since I work in construction, I was summoned to help. That was fine, but I needed all her children to help as well. I started with the projects, including the kitchen and bathroom design, water, sewage and electricity. She hired a builder to do some of the work because I could only go there on the weekends. The builder followed my plans and did everything nicely. During the weekends I went there and worked on the house, doing tasks that can be done on Sundays, like electricity, the floor, sanding and varnishing. After 7 or 8 weekends of my wife and me working on that house every weekend, I started noticing that my sister-in-law, who is 39 years old, never shows up to work. My brother-in-law, who is 40 years old, is inconsistent. One weekend he appears, the next he has a job to do, then goes again, then there is a family event that he must go to. He is inconsistent, but when he appears, he works very hard. It seemed like only my part of the family was suffering. I was working 7 days a week without time for my kids. During the weekend they stayed with my mother-in-law and without time to go out with my wife. The next weekend, everybody was supposed to help. My brother-in-law was there since 8 a.m. My wife was also there. Great. I'll learn this on. We were all working hard, following my lead in a tense environment because I am not a soft person during work. But my sister-in-law was nowhere to be found. Around 11 a.m., my sister-in-law finally appeared with coffee in one hand. I started telling her what to do, listing tasks. She yelled at me that I am not the boss of her. Something snapped in me then and there. She was right. I told her that I was never going to work in this house ever again. That was it. She cried. My wife cried. Everybody cried. I told my wife that this was my final word, but she could come to help her mother. I would also come, but I would stay with the kids. Almost half a year later, there is still work to be done in my mother-in-law's new house. We have family reunions there, but there are still outlets with exposed wires. But it is fine. It's clear that everyone was supposed to pitch in equally on the mother-in-law's new house, but it looks like some people have been relying too much on free labor. If they truly cared about getting it done, they would contribute more instead of leaving wires exposed and tasks incomplete. It's totally fair to limit help to one two weekends a month, especially if others aren't showing up or respecting the effort being put in. I think you are not in the wrong here for deciding to step back until there's a more balanced contribution from everyone. Am I the jerk for not helping my friend? Recently, one of my friends had been going through a tough time. One of her cousins passed away a year ago, and recently that cousin's father passed away too. She never really did much for me, but I helped her and consoled her throughout this. The problem started when she began a relationship with this older guy. She is a minor, and he was her cousin brother's friend. I honestly felt a little weirded out but still tried to give her advice, like asking her to think about her choices. She would not listen to me, saying I did not understand anything. I stood my ground, saying that it was weird and literally illegal, but she would not listen. A few of our classmates found out about it and one of them relentlessly teased her. This girl was actually one of her friends. When her cousin died, this friend said she was looking for attention by crying about it. For some reason, she forgave her. A few days later, she asked me to help her get back at her friend. By help, she meant that I needed to throw my social life on the line and do all the talking for her. I said I was tired of her shenanigans and that it was her own fault for telling people who she was dating and just dating an adult in the first place. I said I would not help. She messages me day and night with many depressing things. Many people in our common friend group complain that she takes help for granted and that I should cut ties with her. I just do not have the mental capability to deal with her on top of my studies and personal life. There were many other times she just expected help without any consideration. On top of that, she criticized everything I did. One day, she told me that I was not taking my studies seriously and that I was whiling away my time flirting with random boys. I snapped. I commented on how ironic that was considering that she would have flunked all her classes without my help, and even more so considering that she was dating an adult as a minor. I walked off after that, and we do not talk anymore. It felt so unfair she was willing to forgive something so much more hurtful, but I was honestly happy with this outcome. However, I am also worried. People keep talking behind her back, even more so after I stop talking to her. I hope she is feeling okay, but I really just do not want to get involved. Am I the antagonist for not supporting her? You are not the jerk, but you should absolutely go to a guidance counselor, teacher, or parent and tell them what's going on. It sounds like your friend is in a dangerous situation and needs more help than you can provide. You've done the right thing by stepping back for your own mental health, but letting an adult know anonymously could be the extra step to ensure she gets the support she needs. It's a lot to ask of anyone, let alone someone young, to take on the weight of such a complicated situation. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.